Pretty good. Hey, I didn't even see you there. Hey guys, Nick Rutter from McKees37.com. My good friend Ivan LaCroix. Yes, sir. I thought you were doing the, the trunk. What are you coming to inspect my work or something? Actually, yes, but <laughs> what do you carry that thing in your pocket all the time? Almost. All right, well, go ahead and take a look at it. So, what we're doing here is we're just finishing polishing the hood on this beautiful Cadillac CT4V Blackwing. Yeah. This is a beautiful car, and we're going to showcase our brand new Graphene Pro Coat 2.0. But before you apply it, you have to polish. Well, how does it look? Beautiful. You know, I got the waffle pads out just for you. I know. I know you like the waffle pads. Exactly. So um, for years, we've sold our uh, SiO2 Ceramic Series coating, which is three years uh, in terms of longevity. And then we've been selling our graphene coating, right. which is five years. Exactly. And as technology evolved, we were able to introduce a 10-year ceramic coating with the graphene formulation so that's our graphene pro code 2 pro code 2 and you know you asked me when you got here why is it 2.0 wasn't it the, the first one you came out with for the graphene well the story behind this is that i bought a mustang convertible about a year ago yeah and we were finishing testing on our graphene line and the, the coating was offering outstanding performance however it was a little hard to wipe off yeah and so i approached my chemist and i said hey listen Everything is great about this, but it's a little hard to wipe off. So he said, well, let me send you something else. So he sent a formula that he said was modified, a little bit easier to apply. Right. And that's what turned into our regular graphene ceramic coating, the MKGC-140. Uh, okay. So <laughs> anyway, I said, hey, listen, the one you sent me, just keep working on it, because you told yeah. me it was permanent. Right. You know, Semi-permanent for all intents and purposes. Right. And fast forward a year, and that's how we're at 2.0. Exactly. So it's not 1.0, it's 2.0. So this and has been cooking in the oven for a long time. And since you tested it on your Mustang, shouldn't it have been a 5.0? Yeah, yeah I, know. I do have the 5.0. That, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Always a funny guy. So um, unless you've been living under a rock the last couple of years, uh, graphene coatings and ceramic coatings, they last much longer than a traditional wax or a paint sealant because if you look at your paint through a microscope, it's what? It's a bunch of peaks and valleys, and it's porous. It looks like a sponge, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's not perfectly smooth. When you feel it like this, you're like, oh, it's smooth. But it's not. So like you said, there's pits, pores, valleys, and ridges. And what a coating does is a coating fills all of that in. And it actually becomes a functional part of the paint. Right. It actually bonds to the paint. It becomes the paint. Yes. Yeah. Where a wax just sits on top. So right. um, think about it versus like a, almost like a tattoo versus a moisturizing lotion. Exactly. You know? The tattoo becomes part of your skin. Like right. It's there for good. So the coating, because it creates a perfectly smooth surface, it's very hydrophobic. It's extremely glossy. And most importantly for me, chemical resistant. Yes, yes. So for daily drivers or even, you know, higher end cars that maybe they're exposed to acid rain or you take them on a trip occasionally. Right. Or just a bird. Or just a yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, uh, we're in Florida here. Yeah. And in Florida, you have these immensely dangerous thing called love bugs. Yes. Yeah. They will eat paint. They don't, they don't, <coughs> they just don't damage the paint. They actually eat through it. Yeah, they're acidic. Yeah. But the coating protects it from that. It does. So a lot of people think that a coating is a impenetrable force field. Well, a, a coating is a lot stronger than a wax, but it still requires care like a traditional, you know, wax wood or even your, your paint. Your paint requires special care. Right. Now, before you apply a coating, there's a number of different steps that you have to go through to prep the surface. And a lot of people hear the word coating or permanent or semi-permanent, and they get really apprehensive. Yeah. Um, I'm never going to have my car fixed again. <laughs> or, yes. or I'm going to screw it up, or there's going to be permanent damage if I don't wipe it off all the way. Well, truth be told, a high-quality coating, especially a graphene coating, is actually fairly easy to apply, but there's steps you have to go through, which we're not necessarily going to showcase in this video. No. Because they've already been performed in this Cadillac. But I'll put a link below for another video I did where I walk you through each step. But in a nutshell, you have to mechanically and then chemically decontaminate the paint. Correct. With an iron remover and then a clay bar or a clay mitt. Yes. And then you have to polish the vehicle, even if it's brand new. It's a really deep cleaning step yes. to polish. Yes. It exfoliates. 
Uh, even for a brand new car, using something like the McKee 37 Complete Finishing Polish. And then after you do that, you need to use a coating prep spray. And tell me what that does, Ivan. The coating prep spray takes everything off the surface that we don't want. Oils, waxes, grease, and even, you know, the little oils from our fingers. Well, so, yeah, because the, the coating, the surface has to be squeaky clean, otherwise the coating won't stick, right? Exactly. If you're using a soap or something like that, it can leave a little residue. It can, yep. And a lot of people use rubbing alcohol. Oh, no. Well, rubbing alcohol should remain in the medicine cabinet of your bathroom. It has nothing to do with detailing. Now, there is a bit of IPA in that mix, but there's a lot of other things as well, because IPA alone does not do the job. No, and, and IPA is isopropyl alcohol. And basically, you know, when he talks about removing the oils, it's from your skin, like you mentioned, but there's actually polishing oils. So every single polish, you have uh, micro abrasives that are diminishing. They're suspended in a liquid here, and there's solvents and there's lubricating oils. A lot of people falsely interpret polishes because a lot of them are marketed as water-based. Well, water-based, yes, that means the biggest component in there is water. But after that, you have the oils, you have the solvents and all that they need to be removed. Exactly, yeah. And all those, all those are necessary ingredients in a polish. Exactly. Otherwise, you just have a little bit of abrasive powder. Right. You can't do anything with that. <laughs> no, exactly. So um, a lot of people, like you mentioned, use IPA or isopropyl alcohol because online, a lot of people do that because you can get a quart of uh, IPA at, at the, at the um, pharmacy for a few bucks. Yeah, exactly. But IPA is an awful lubricant. Okay, it doesn't, Definitely. doesn't lubricate the surface. So you have this beautiful $75,000 Cadillac. You've just spent all day cleaning, decontaminating, polishing it. The last thing you want to do is go to your bathroom cabinet next to your toilet bowl cleaner, <laughs> yeah. grab some alcohol, squirt it on a rag, and then scratch the finish because poor lubrication leads to what? Uh, it leads to marring. It leads to all sorts of things that we just tried to eliminate. The other thing is a lot of these IPAs, or isopropyl alcohols, have some form of fragrance in them that's actually leaving something on the paint. Yes, yes. So um, what we uh, formulated instead is called coating prep spray. And like all of our other products in the Key 37 line, it's aptly named. There's no guessing no. what it does. <laughs> kind of like floor mat and cargo liner rejuvenator. What does that do? What do you mean, what does it do? <laughs> It cleans floor mats and cargo liners, but yes. anyway, so this product is a blend of alcohol, it's a blend of surfactants and lubricating oils. Exactly. And, and lubricants that essentially what happens is when you spray on the surface, it encapsulates the oils and the solvents. Lifts them up. Lifts them up, suspends them. So when you wipe away with a microfiber towel, which I'll show you here, it takes them off completely. And this does have a pleasant fragrance. However, the difference is that we tested this fragrance it does not stick to the surface. Exactly. And the other thing is, compared to an IPA, it doesn't evaporate away as quickly as an IPA, exactly. meaning that it has, the chemicals have time, and the surfactants have time to do their job. Exactly. So this is the perfect blend. I'm glad you mentioned that. So when you spray this on, if you were spraying IPA on the surface, it would flash or evaporate right away. Right. Therefore, nothing is left behind. If you make this product not flash enough, then it's going to be a smeary, hazy mess. So yeah. a lot of care went into formulating that. But So that's how you prep the surface. You go through the various steps before you put the graphene coating on. And you have to perform this no matter how old the vehicle is. You treat a 10-year-old car the same way you would treat a new car, unless the swirls are deeper. And in that case, you need to go to a heavier polishing step. Now, one other thing, though, I'd like to mention is some detailers will use a body shop prep solvent. I'm glad you mentioned that. And that is the worst. Worst thing you can do. That's even worse than the IPA. Why is that? A, a body shop prep solvent is designed to prep for paint, not prep for coating. And it has a lot of solvents in it that actually stay on the surface, inhibiting the bonding of the coating. And too much, uh, too strong of a solvent, um, it can actually cause paint swelling, right? Paint swelling and softens the paint. That way, you're actually damaging the paint. Now, before painting, I used to own body shops. You want to damage the paint to make the other layer of paint adhere. Yeah. We're not putting paint on this, we're putting a paint coating. Putting a paint coating. So speaking of that, I want to show you how to apply this guy right here. And so the uh, Graphene Pro Coat 2.0, it's a two ounce, or for my international friends, 60 milliliters or 60 cc's. And believe it or not, Ivan, just like everything else McKee's 37 makes, it's a great value. Yes. And when you look <laughs> at it, you go, two ounce bottle for how much? 
you know, what do you mean it's a great value? There's enough coding in here to do three of these Cadillacs. Yeah, and okay. it is, you know, the, the formulation, the graphene coatings are a little more expensive than others, but yeah. for a reason, though. And, you know, I know all the engineering and design and all the R&D that went into this coating. Trust me, you're getting a spectacular value. Yeah, so like you said, Ivan, a lot of work went into this formula. Right. Um, it's not just, hey, let's throw some chemicals in my bathtub, no. start with a big spatula, <laughs> and then market and label it. Because yeah. we talked about this in a prior video. There's a lot of uh, off-brand, private label uh, coatings yeah, exactly. from, from you know, third world countries. And yeah. what happens is these coatings can actually cause damage to your paint. Right. You mean you didn't buy this off Alibaba.com? No. No? no okay. I didn't buy it off anything like that. No. <laughs> So um, our coating is made in the USA. It's high quality chemistry. Trust the, or excuse me, buy from a reputable company and yes. trust the name on the bottle. So a little bit goes a long way. We have a dropper here, Ivan. Yep. And you just dispense some right there, like that in the dropper. Right. And then we also include a specially designed applicator sponge. And a lot of people freak out with the sponge saying, it's gonna absorb all the coating. It doesn't, it's designed to do this. No, so this is uh, comprised of two foams. There's a crimson foam, which is closed cell material. Yeah. And then there's a gray foam, which is an open cell to make it easy to hold on to. And then sandwiched between those two is a layer of adhesive that prevents the coating exactly. from penetrating. So and it's actually a really nice co coating applicator to hold. It is because, you know, when coatings came out, um, you know, the, primarily that technology originated from Europe and they would um, send these coatings with these little tiny makeup applicator pads. Yeah. <laughs> so you have this little tiny applicator pad, and you're going like this. Well, cars in America are a lot bigger than cars in Europe. Exactly. You know, we, don't, we don't drive little tiny Audi A1s and you know, Volkswagen, whatever. Yeah. We have larger vehicles, like exactly. this Cadillac or pickup trucks or your bus. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's yeah. huge. Yeah. So I got some coating on my applicator right. uh, pad, and really easy to apply, Ivan. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. And you can apply a coating a number of different ways. The way I like to do it is I like to go side to side and then up and down. And this ensures uniform coverage. And you'll hear a squeaking noise. That's perfectly normal. And then you apply more coating when you feel the applicator pad being grabby. If it starts to grab on the surface, you'll apply more coating. But normally, on a vehicle like this, what I would do is I would coat one panel at a time. Uh, this hood would be considered two panels, so if this were the real world, I would coat half the hood. The front of this hood actually has a uh, clear bra, PPF, right. which you pointed out, which this coating is safe for. You have to be very um, picky with what coating you apply to a PPF because the inexpensive coatings will cause yellowing over time. Yeah, exactly. And it'll avoid your warranty, so make sure you pick a high quality coating if you do that. So side to side, up and down, and then there's what they call a flashing aspect. And you can probably see this here. It's like a rainbow effect, right? Right. It looks like an oil slick on water. Yes, exactly. And when, what, 75 to 80 percent of that is returned to clear, that's when we take our leveling towel. Yep. And, we, and I'm glad you mentioned leveling. So the Pro Coat 2.0, number one, you'll notice how I applied it. And yeah. I'm casually standing here talking with you. Right. I'm not freaking out. I'm not panicking. Some coatings, you know, we say this um, tongue in cheek, and you know, they say, applying a 68.2 degree room temperature with 0% humidity yeah. and you know, wipe it off using this exact towel, using a counterclockwise and clockwise, I mean, all this just, yeah. just ridiculous stuff. This coating is very forgiving and it is self-leveling. Exactly. So that takes away some of the apprehensiveness that people might have about applying a coating. Right. You still have to wipe it off. Self-leveling doesn't mean you just walk away. But what that means is that you know, if there happens to be a spot that is not completely wiped off all the way, it'll level out over time. That does not mean you will not have high spots. No. But it just makes it easier and more forgiving overall. So when you wipe off a coating, uh, you want to use the flat weave side of a microfiber towel. Do not use the fluffy side. And you'll take short, firm strokes, essentially taking little bitty bites out of it. And this is the trick to wiping off a coating. If you wipe like a crazy wild man that didn't take his medication, then what'll happen <laughs> is It'll, I know that, I'm talking about myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it'll smear around, and then you'll be left with high spots, and you know, the coating will harden on the surface in a smeary pattern. Right. And another tip, after you wipe a section, take your towel and flip it to another side, and you want to have plenty of microfiber towels when you wipe off a coating. You know, I've been selling products like this, Ivan, um, for over a decade, and you've been detailing for over four decades, right. longer than I've been alive. 
And what I've noticed is when I sell these products, you know, whether it's in our beautiful store here or if it's on the website, you know, people say, I'll, I'll take a three pack of towels. And I'll say, you know, do you already have a, a bunch of towels? And they'll say, well, no, I just have three towels. <laughs> you need to use a lot more towels. Exactly. You don't just use three towels. So. Now, what happens if you accidentally do leave a high spot like I just did? Well, so a high spot is fancy for excess product. So what will happen is um, the next day you'll right. see like a, a little smudge there. It'll look like if you use a, a detail spray and you don't wipe it all the way off, you see a smudge and you go yeah. try and wipe it off. That's what this will look like. If that happens, don't panic, don't freak out, don't go on social media and take a bunch of selfies with all these crazy <laughs> hashtags. Yeah. Take some finishing polish like the McKees 37, right. complete finishing polish, and you can use an applicator pad, or you can just squirt some on a towel, yep. and just gently rub it. Now, another thing, though, is if you find that high spot in short order, half an hour to an hour, you can actually reapply coating on top of it, Yes. and that will reactivate the coating that's there, and we're good to go. Yeah, because so they'll remove that high spot. So always, when you're done the car, inspect it again. Yeah, inspect it very thoroughly, and um, the reason it reactivates that is essentially the way a coating works. You know, we talked about what it does, but in this bottle, there's a solvent, and suspended in that solvent are the nanoglass graphene oxide uh, resins, and that's how this works. So when you apply it back and forth, side to side, or circular, right. which you can do that too, the carrying agent, the carrier, that evaporates, and the coating is left behind. So like you mentioned, if you're going around your car and you might miss a spot, a high spot. And actually, you did. Which I did. So not surprising. I'm not perfect, right okay? You have to inspect things thoroughly. That's and why from you, different angles. From different angles, yeah. You yeah. take a second look, but the coating will reactivate that. It'll soften the solvents so you can wipe off the excess. But do you have that light still, Ivan? You got the... Um, scan grip light? Yeah, the scan yeah. grip lights. So these are worth their weight in gold. Um, you can also use the flashlight on your phone, but these scan grip lights, they're professional grade. They last a long time. And you can adjust the light intensity and color. So, so that's looking beautiful. Yeah, excellent. Now, how long do we let the graphene Proco 2.0 Good sit before getting wet? Good question. So um, the standard rule of thumb with coatings is 24 hours. Right. And what will happen is if the vehicle is not parked in the garage while the coating cures for 24 hours, if it's exposed to any moisture, the moisture will get trapped in the coating. And right. then it'll be really hard to remove any water spots. So. Plan on having the vehicle sit in a garage for 24 hours. Yeah, and if you can't, wait till the weather is at the, uh, the appropriate time of year. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's the McKee 37. That's our all new Graphene Pro Coat 2.0. And Ivan, we have more new products coming, and I'm excited that you're here at yeah, the shop. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to be filming all day. And Ivan, you know, if they want to see more videos like this, what should they do? So. The easy way is go to mckees37.com, order the product, and while you're there ordering, there's actually a link to the videos. But if you don't want to do that yet, you're, you're eventually going to do it. But you can go to YouTube and go to mckees37 on YouTube, find this guy, he does a lot of great videos, a lot of spectacular content, very educational. And give a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and subscribe, please. You're just saying all those nice things because I'm buying you lunch. Hey, Taco Bell is Taco Bell. Uh, <laughs> you promised me Taco Bell. So you reserved the corner table. Yes, exactly. A window seat. So Ivan, yeah. always a pleasure to have you. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Take care and God bless. We have a lot of vehicle left to go. Exactly. And I'm not joking. He did promise me Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's been some budget cuts due to inflation.